Hello guys and welcome back, thanks for stopping by for one more video. On this video, I'm going to talk about the reverbs that are included in Cubase 10.5 Pro. And the reverbs that are inside Cubase, I think they are the unsung heroes of Cubase because they sound really incredible, they fit a wide range of material and each one of them has a very strong point. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use them, what material I tend to run through them, what reverb I use for what, what reverb I use for vocals, what reverb I use for drums, what reverb I use to give space to a mix, uh, to add dimension, and we're going to do this all right now. So let's jump into Cubase and let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to give you a quick overview of all the reverbs that are included in Cubase. So let's go for this vocal track right here. Let's create this loop and now I'm going to give you a very quick run through of the Cubase reverbs. Okay, let's open the channel settings. And let's talk about them, right? So we have four reverbs in Cubase. The first reverb that I'm going to talk about is Revelation. And that's the one. This is one of the newest additions in Cubase. Uh, I think it was introduced in Cubase 8.5. I might be wrong, but this reverb sounds brilliant. Why do I use it? I use it for vocals. I use it for synths. I use it for drums, I use it for electric guitars because you can even emulate spring reverbs with it. It's a very versatile reverb, it sounds really big, it sounds really lush, but it can also sound really nice and small and you can use it to create, you know, the space of width in your mix. Now, I'm going to show you the next reverb, which is Reverence. And this is an impulse response reverb, which means you can load even your own Impulse responses, you can find those online if you want to experiment, but it comes with quite a few amazing impulse responses straight out of the box. So if I go browse and I want to, let's say, use this to place my orchestra, I do lots of orchestral music inside a nice friend's chapel, a stone chapel, I can click on that. And now, because this is an impulse reverb, my orchestral ensemble is going to sound like it actually played in that very hall, in that very chapel in this case. Um, so there are some really cool things in this reverb, for example, with a new update, there were some new impulse responses added. So if you want to check them out, you can go here and go filters and you will find the reverb machines that actually give you some really nice impulses from actual vintage reverb machines. So, something to explore. Um, yeah, this is one of the reverbs that I tend to use for orchestral music, for acoustic instruments, for things that I want a little bit of realism, but not this kind of artificial reverb sound, which is what most people are used to, okay? We're not really used to this reverb, we're used to this artificial algorithmic reverbs, which is not a bad thing, they sound amazing and our ears are so trained to this sound because it's been like, it's been there for like decades of recordings and um, maybe some of your favorite music used exclusively algorithmic reverbs. Impulse response reverbs is a new thing. A few years ago they were very heavy on the CPU, so many people wouldn't use them but now, of course, with the modern CPUs, that's not a problem. Now, the next reverb, which is a really unsung hero, in my opinion, is the Roomworks. And this is an incredibly powerful reverb. Because it's been there for a while, many people tend to forget about it. And uh, they just neglect the amount of power that it offers. This is a real powerhouse. It's a sound design tool. I love it. And I use it sometimes for vocals, drums. Um, I use it to create gated reverbs on drums, create big rooms for drums. It has an envelope there. So again, really, really powerful reverb. And then the last one is the Roomworks SC, which is like 
the simplest reverb that you can find in Cubase. I like the fact that sometimes it can sound really lo-fi. Try a Roomworks SE, it's really good. Now, this is a quick overview. Let's start using them and I'm gonna show you how they sound. Let's start with this vocal and uh, the first thing I'm gonna try is Revelation, okay? And just so that we can move very quickly, I'm not gonna use a send effect, I'm going to use them as inserts, but most of the times, when I don't use a reverb as, um, you know, effect or if it's not part of the sound, if I'm creating like a synth sound, I tend to use it as a send effect. But let's make this thing super easy, super clear. So let's go and run this vocal and I'm going to turn down the mix and I'm going to introduce the reverb slowly. Oh, I'm saying it's tired of waiting we can leave this so straight away you can hear that this reverb sounds really beautiful, really lush, it's uh, silky and it has a few early reflection modes, you know, the hole, the chamber, the studio, these can add a different character to the sound. Now what I like about this reverb is that you have a reverb tail and early reflection slider, so I can say Maybe I want to make this vocal a little bit more stereo, but I don't want to add reverb to this. You can go all the way down to the early reflections, and now you can take advantage of these early reflection modes. Now let's compare with and without and see how much of a difference it makes to the kind of stereo perception of this vocal. Oh, place behind your yeah. I'm saying it's tired. So see, you, t you turn it off and it becomes like mono. It becomes really narrow. But you turn it on and you get this kind of airy feel on the vocal. It makes everything stereo. But you don't really consider it as a reverb, right? Let me try it again. I'm waiting we can leave this whole place behind yeah. And let's try the chamber mode. I'm saying it's tired. Now let's change the early reflection size. I'm waiting we can leave this whole place behind yeah. And let's add a little bit of pre-delay. I'm saying it's tired. I'm waiting, we can leave this whole place. See, you can create so many different effects just by playing with the early reflections and the pre-delay. And of course, if you find that sometimes the early reflections clash with your vocal a little bit, just add the low cut filter. And this will open up things a little bit. It's behind it. oh, uh, I'm saying it's tired. And when you turn the high cut filter all the way up so that it doesn't cut any of the high frequencies, you will see that it kind of makes this really sparkly, airy thing on top of the vocals. I'm waiting, we can leave this whole place behind it. Oh, uh, Okay, and of course now I'm going to add a little bit of tail. There are so many different parameters with the tail. Let's try and go a little bit higher with the tail. I'm saying it's tired Nice. Now let's add some modulation. We can leave this whole place behind so this can actually add a little bit of interest to your reverb. It makes it a bit less static. I'm saying. Beautiful. And of course we have our low time, we have our high time, so you can make the reverb a little bit brighter or, or less muddy or you might want to add a little bit of more low end to your reverb. And it's tired. See? High time. Nice sizzle right there. Okay? So it's completely customizable. Let's change the room size. Waiting, we can leave this. Oh, please be high. And the main time. I'm saying it's tired. I'm waiting. Did you know that a Cubase included reverb could do that? Uh, I know that many people don't. I'm pretty sure that many of you know that. But nevertheless, 
This is an amazing reverb, guys. Okay, and now let's change the density. We can leave this whole place behind. Go love, I'm saying it's time. Okay, and then of course you can change the width. So if you want like a more mono kind of lo-fi reverb, you can just make this a little bit. Okay, so very, very nice reverb and it's extremely customizable. So if you want to have like a nice modulation. I'm saying it's time. Okay, it sounds really nice. It sounds really nice and warm, but you can also make it really bright if you, for example, say you want to open the high cut or make it really dark. Very customizable. This is one of the reverbs that I always go to and it always gives me a sound. Let's move on to the second reverb and we're gonna go for reverence, right? So let me just uh, extend this selection a little bit like that. Here we have reverence and like I said this is a convolution reverb, it's an impulse response reverb so you have a little bit less control with this one but that's not the point, the point is that it can emulate a room, a hole, exactly like it is. So you wouldn't use this for flexibility but you would use it if you really want that sound that it offers or if you have some impulse responses that you like to use this is also great for that. So, for example, if I want to turn down the mix on this one, let's listen to this vocal in this French stone chapel. Okay, if I want to change the tail of the reverb, the length, I can just go like this. And then Reverence does this for me. Now, what I want to show you with this one is some cool things. You can have a reverse button here, and this reverses the impulse, so you can have effects that sound like this. Which is great, you know? These are great effects that you can use in your productions to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of interest. And of course we have a spectrogram and we have our information where this was recorded. Um, and we have an EQ if you want to change the frequency characteristics of the reverb. Uh, what I want to show you just for the sake of it is some of the reverb machine presets. So I'm going to go like this. Let's go for that. And the other cool thing that you can do with this reverb is you can lock the mix. So, for example, in this case, I want to have it at like 35, and now I can still browse the presets without losing that mix percentage. So let's try this Echo Micplex. So this is like a like an Echoplex delay. Okay, let's try this one. Let's go. I'm saying Reverse action. Let's try some of the spring orange vocals. So these are really, really nice impulses and you can use them for vocals, you can use them for guitars, they're great for guitars actually, electric guitars especially. What I tend to use this reverb for is for, like I said, orchestral music. If I have recorded like a um, string quartet and I want to place it in a nice warm room, this is the reverb I go with inside Cubase. So, let's move on to the next one and the next one is Roomworks. And room works is really, really cool. So let me show you how it works. Let's try this vocal. First of all, you will find that it sounds really, really good straight out of the box. So you have quite a few controls. You have variation, you have diffusion, you have the width, you have the pretty lay. Let me play a little bit with them so you can hear how they sound. We can leave this whole place behind, yeah. Which? 
I like what the variation thing does. Now let's go hold. Now let's try the whole power meter. Check it out. Beautiful. Run anything through it, like a synth note, a single note. Run like, uh, I don't know, like a uh, cowbell, whatever. Run it through this. You have a new sound. And it sounds really, really good. If you want to get this sound uh, with reverbs, you have to go for something like the Black Hole or like the Arturia reverb um, that I just talked about in a few videos ago, like this here. I'll just try and put it there. And uh, there are quite a few things that you can do with this reverb. Let me show you. For example, you can have those input filters. So you can filter your input before it gets into the reverb. So let's say you have a vocal that has a little bit of rumble and you want to take away a little bit more of the low mids because it makes it confusing. You can filter the source, that vocal, on the way in and you can also filter the high end, okay? So... And you also have an EQ right here, so you can boost the low end and the high end. Now, let's go to these controls because these are really interesting. And this is the damping. You can damp the frequencies, of course. So I can damp the top end if I want to make this reverb a little bit darker. And then we have the low and high level for a reverb. This is really cool. Again, this is similar to the Revelation. Um, it allows you to shape the sound of the reverb. And last but not least, who would know, but this reverb also has an envelope. How many people know that? I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. Did you know that? But it's there and it's on Roomworks, okay? It's not one of the fancy new reverbs, it's right there. So let me just uh, turn up the amount so we can activate the envelope and I'm gonna go really drastic so we can hear what it does. So with this one, I can say that the reverb has an attack and a release. So let's try this. Let's go all the way up with a release and let's turn up the attack. So now what we're telling Roomworks is that the reverb will have an attack that will be determined by this control. So let's try this. So what this does is it allows you to clean up the reverb when you have a vocal and you don't want it to clash with the actual vocal. It leaves a little bit of space because it doesn't immediately hit with the vocal. So the attack is a little bit more soft, which makes the vocals clearer in the mix. And let's try the release now. Behind, yeah. Let's go I'm saying it's tired Again, the release does the exact opposite. It determines how quickly the reverb will stop. We can leave this whole place behind So the sound changes dramatically as you can see. But there's another little control that I want to show you which is really, really cool in my opinion. And it's this efficiency control. Now, I guess this was placed there to conserve CPU uh, resources because reverbs tended to be really CPU hungry processors. Nowadays, we don't even notice them. I mean, right now my computer doesn't even know that this thing exists. It's so light. Uh, and most of the Steinberg reverbs in Cubase are light, but, this can be used as a creative control, and that's how I use it. Uh, if you have it on export, this does nothing because it gives you always the full quality. But if you turn off export, then the higher you turn it up, you make the efficiency higher, so that means it will eat up less CPU. But we don't care about this for now. What we care is that it will make it a little bit more grainy, a bit more lo-fi, a bit more 80s, a bit more, you know, great for synths, and so on and so forth. 
So let's try this and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's go, I'm saying it's tired of waiting. We can leave this whole place behind. Yeah. Let's go, I'm saying. So, it makes it really, really grainy. It makes it have a lot of character. I really like that. And this control, it's so easy to miss. You might think, oh, okay, it's efficient, so I don't need to care about this. But it actually adds a sound. And it might not be the sound that you're looking for if you want to add it to like a very nice pop ballad or something like this. But for some gritty stuff, it's great. Uh, okay, let's keep the same material and move on to Roomworks SC. This is super simple. I'm just gonna play so that you can hear how it sounds. Let's go up. I'm saying it's tired of waiting. We can leave this whole place be. So this is basically a Roomworks, but with less controls, very straightforward. It works great. And to be honest with you, if I wanted to have something up and running really quickly, and if I didn't want to mess with the controls that Roomworks gives you, then that would be my first choice. So if you are not familiar with reverbs and you're starting out and you want to get a good sound, just slap Roomworks SC, change the reverb time, the pre-delay, and I can guarantee you will come up with a really nice, decent reverb sound. Now, the last thing I want to show you is another way that I use Roomworks, and this is to add depth and width and a room sound to drums, and more specifically, acoustic drums. So in this case, I have loaded a drum kit. So this might sound a little bit dry, maybe I want to make the sound of that snare a little bit bigger, you know? So I might turn up the mix and immediately it sounds like it's a more roomy sound, but it has a character, you know, many reverbs are very hi-fi and they don't achieve that sound. So let me show you. Size. And now, again without it, you know, it becomes wide, it becomes big. Let's make it a little bit more grainy. You know what I mean? This sounds very nice, but this adds character. Check out. Maybe mono. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope now you have a better understanding on how cool the reverbs that we have in Cubase sound like. So before you go and buy the next reverb, which I totally suggest you do because every reverb gives you a different sound, try out the reverbs that we have in Cubase, they're really amazing. So huge hugs to my Cubase fam out there, I love you guys and I really appreciate your support and your love. If you enjoyed this video, give this the old school thumbs up. And if you're new here, maybe you might want to consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell notification icon. It's really important and it really helps me create more videos for you. Thanks so much guys. Dom signing off. Have fun, see you in the next one.